Hey everyone, Matt here from Herbal House New Zealand. Today we're taking a look at the Helios 800X and why we're excited to show you guys just how great these are. So we're going to bullet point some key features and what to expect out of the box here. Um, so obviously you're going to get your discrete packaging, but the most important part is what's inside the box. And for a pretty compact box, there's a lot of equipment in here. So with a bit of camera magic, we've got everything out of the box. Now, when we did unpackage it, everything is packaged beautifully in these cardboard brown boxes. We've just pulled everything out here, so I was just going to show you exactly what it looks like. I'll just quickly whip this one out. They do a bloody good job keeping this package, you might say. Foam, packaging and bags to keep moisture out. So I'll just show you what that all looks like. But you're going to have eight of these bars and obviously two end rails. You're going to have this beautiful driver box and all of the accessories to make it go together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly put this thing together so you can see on camera just how easy it is to go together and might give you a few tips and tricks when you're putting it together yourself. I found the assembly for the Helios 800X pretty straightforward for such a large panel with quite a few components. It is worth noting to snap in the two outer LED bars first so that the frame can take shape. Once the frame has shape, the rest of the bars start falling in easy peasy. I will say that once the LED driver is mounted to the back, it is going to increase in weight quite dramatically. It can be worth having a second set of hands to help you string this up, just to prevent any damages. Alrighty, so as you can see now that we've got it together, it looks fantastic. The way they've done this construction is a huge improvement upon the previous generation. They've split the diodes up into eight separate bars. The beauty of the eight bars is it's providing much more even light coverage and spread, reducing hot spots on the plant, which is obviously a good thing to have. Um, and the design itself has allowed for a lot better passive cooling. So for commercial growers, this is a big bonus, but domestic growers, domestic growers sorry, this is also a win. Uh, what we like to see here is just how easy this frame has come together and how versatile it is for changing in and out bars as Four Seasons is looking to have swappable LED bars in here for different spectrums should you desire or supplemental UV or infrared uh, is what we've been told is the plan for these things. But overall a really good construction and of course the anchor points uh, in the centre here not right at the corners. Uh, which I believe is actually quite a nice thing because when you've got them triangulating right off the corners on such a massive panel it gets a bit messy. So what we like to see here is when this is installed you're going to get a lot of good airflow passing through it which is going to keep the LED bars running cool and at a mere 100 watts per panel these will get warm but not hot which is what we like to see especially when you've got a lot of airflow within grow space which of course is recommended. Okay, so moving on to the feeding part of this absolute beast, we have the Four Seasons driver box here. So this is obviously an aluminium case with drivers inside. Now the drivers that they've gone for here are two Sosin 400 watt drivers, well at least they're tuned for 400 watts. Uh, what we like about the Sosins, we've done some tests with them and they've proven to be really efficient, really reliable and definitely an up and coming brand as far as drivers go in the commercial world. Now, you can't see it in here but these drivers are firmly fixed to the aluminium case, meaning that heat rejection for the drivers themselves will pass through the aluminium case and can be rejected. But I will mention in the sides of the case here, they have cut some slits to allow heat to naturally be from the case. Now, in saying that, that this is and does look fixed to the back of the panel, it can be completely removed and placed external of the grow space or up high right out of the way. Um, the idea being that we will have some extension leads and basically that'll allow you to put this within reason from the grow light and out of the way. It will reduce the panel weight overall, which is a bit of a nice bonus. Now, moving on to the front of the panel that they have got these, uh, how would we call them, water resistant sort of military looking plugs here. Nice thing about those is once you've done them up tight, they're definitely not coming loose and obviously you don't want things coming loose in this application. It is relatively higher voltage DC, so it's good to have a really accurate connection that isn't going to work loose, no matter vibrations and things like that, and of course be moisture resistant. Same thing can be said with the dimmer control that they have on the front of the panel here. Uh, they've done it in steps this time for these panels, uh, basically allowing you to adjust in 25% increments and it also has an external control setting. So once you flick over to the external control setting, that's when these RJ ports in the middle here become relevant. Those RJ ports are designed to multi-link panels together for a single master controller to basically adjust the brightness of each panel. Being able to adjust the brightness of each panel will allow you to basically set it on a timer. And that means that this master controller can create a sunrise and sunset simulation. It can cycle the lights for your flowering cycle, your beach cycle and everything in between. 
and we will cover more on the master controller in another video uh, regarding the features of that controller itself because it is quite comprehensive and deserves its own video. But for now, we're just giving you a run through on why it is so great and it connects. For a lot of people though, if you get multiple Helios, whether it be the 480, the 640X or the 800X, you can just link straight from the RJ cable to the next power over, set it to extend, uh, sorry, external control, and then use a single LED at the front, which you can reach easily, which will adjust the rest of the LEDs down the line. Just like that. Okay, so moving on to the diodes across this panel, what we've got is a feature of 2,000, or just over 2,000 Samsung diodes in the LM301B variety. We've found these to be just such an excellent diode that they've kept the same formula across these, being built up of 3,000K and 5,000K. And of course, we've got some Osrams in there, which are supplementing the 660 reds and a bit of 730 in the far red. It is worth noting that these panels have seen an 8% increase in far red to trigger more of an Emerson effect. The idea being that they're trying to get the right amount of far red. If they add too much, you're gonna see stretching your plants. If they get it just right, which we believe they have, you're gonna see a much better fruiting or flowering cycle. Now, of course, when you do combine these 3000K and 5000K diodes, of course, plus the 660s and 730s when running, we saw about a 3500K average CCT emitting from this panel. Pretty much spot on right where we want to see it and what our, what our customers want to see. Now, I will mention that these, of course, do have a gel coating right across the top that does keep it impervious to moisture. And if you ever needed to give them a clean, you can give them a quick light. And it is also worth noting that the terminals or end connectors on these panels are hidden and sealed away just to keep things more moisture resistant. Okay, so as you can see here, we've strung the LED up in a 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter tent and we've lifted it to about 55 centimeters. Uh, we have also quickly stenciled a grid on the ground, so we're going to take some uh, PAR readings and also some FAR red readings. Um, our Apogee instrument here, uh, I don't know if you can quite see that, with a micro cache, we'll be connecting to our phone and spitting out some live data, which of course is PAR and FAR data. And what we've got over here is our Everfine, and what that'll be doing is spitting out a spectrum reading. So we'll have that on the screen for you guys to have a look at, but um, essentially it gives us a live value of what the panel was actually producing and some other metrics that um, go beyond what most of us understand, but at least we've got them there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right into taking some par values and uh, we'll have a updated PPFD map for you to look at. Okay, so to draw a conclusion from the PPFD that we just carried out, just to remind you, we had this panel set up in a 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter tent, really quite a large space for a single fixture, and we had set it at 50 centimeters above the floor, which would be your simulated canopy, and that gave us an average of 809 U moles across the entire grow space. Absolutely fantastic numbers for a panel this size and only 800 watts, and not to mention that we saw 2.27 PPFD per watt as an efficiency across the grow space. So what we've seen here from Four Seasons is a beautifully designed 800 watt panel at peak power. It's really versatile and of course you can dim it up and down to suit your needs if you're looking for more efficiency. We really like what's to come with interchangeable bars and the likes. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this informative. If you need anything else, give us a call on the information below. Thanks.